Hi, I'm Shorty and welcome to my YouTube channel Shorty Skate Series. Today I'll be breaking down how to 360 frontside stall. I have worked on this skill a few times but it's only been the last couple of months that I've landed it consistently. Therefore I wanted to share how I got to this stage. Here are some tricks that helped me to build up to a 360 frontside stall. Disaster frontside, backside and half cap stalls. The term disaster is where you air into a grind, but in this case you air into a stall. So a disaster frontside helps you get used to pumping up the transition and getting enough air. A disaster backside helps you get used to the takeoff. A disaster half cab helps you get used to spotting and the landing. Knowing how to air out 360 and 360 in a transition will help you to understand your body's rotation. I have tutorials on all these tricks on my YouTube channel. So for this tutorial, it's less about step one, step two, step three, but rather the parts I must think about to do this trick successfully. Of course, it's gonna take a lot of practice, but understanding the technique will hopefully help you progress. Note, when attempting this trick you may fall awkwardly, so I recommend wearing the amount of protective gear that's right for you. The pump. To get the air needed to land this trick, once you drop in, you need to pump hard up the transition to give you the right amount of pop into the air. To do this, I'll squat down a couple of feet out from the transition and look to push my weight through my heels as I roll up the curve. I found the higher I air, the slower I can rotate into the stall, which for me makes it easier. The takeoff. After the pump is the takeoff. It's important to get the right height and air first before starting the rotation. In the beginning, I would throw myself into the rotation and hope I had the height and speed to land it. This meant I would jump too early out of the ramp instead of using the ramp to shoot me up. This resulted in either me not making the full rotation or launching myself out and onto the deck. So once you pump, you want to hold your stance until you're almost at the coping and then lift your knees up to exit the ramp. Do not try to jump out or boost off your toe stop, but rather allow the momentum to take you up and out of the ramp. The rotation. The next thing you want to think about is the rotation. I'm not great at spin, so I need to use my arms a little to help set my rotation. If I don't, I may not make the full 360 degrees. After I drop in, I will position my arms so I'm ready to start the rotation. At about the same time as I start to pump up the transition, I will swing my arms to help me rotate my upper body. You don't need to swing hard, but just enough to set your body to spin. If you don't have an issue with spinning, you may not need to use your arms at all. But remember to engage your core so you don't drop your chest when you land. Also, try to keep your axis straight so you don't end up tipping to one side. Where to look. Knowing where to look was the key to unlocking my 360 stalls because I knew mid-air if I would land it or need to bail. But getting used to spotting took a while for my brain to catch on. I'll try and explain as best I can with the slow-mo visuals. So after the pump, arm swing, take off, you're now in the air. When I rotate past the 180 degree point, because I'm spinning left, I will look down and to my left, so really under my left armpit. If you're spinning right, you want to look down and to your right, under your right armpit. And this is where you need to try and find the coping. Once you find it, keep looking at it until your hips and feet catch up. It's at this time I can tell if I'm going to make contact with the coping, undershoot, overshoot or miss it altogether. I found the safest way to bail out if I undershoot is to land my front foot on the coping and the back foot on a toe stop. If I overshoot, I'll look to land my front foot on all wheels and my back foot in the transition. If I fully overshoot with my weight in my heels, I'll most likely slip out and land on my butt. So just be aware. Knowing how to spot and where to look was the safest thing I could do for myself when practicing 360 stalls. The landing. I have four main issues when trying to land 360 stalls. One, I can't make the full 360 rotation. Two, I over rotate. Three, I drop my chest. And four, I roll off the coping. If you experience the same issues, here are some tips that help me. You can't make the full 360 rotation. 
If I can't make the full rotation, there are three things I like to look at. This is where filming yourself can help to understand what your body is doing. One, you could be taking off or jumping out too early, so remember to wait until you're almost at the coping. Two, you may need to pump a little harder to give yourself more air and time to rotate. Three, look to use your arms a little more to help set the rotation. And sometimes I will need to do all three. Over rotating. When I over rotate, it usually happens when I swing my arms too much. When I land, my upper body is still rotating and it pulls me off the coping and around in a spin. So knowing how much arm swing for your pump will take practice. Dropping the chest. Dropping my chest is very common for me as I forget to keep my core engaged. So when I land on the coping, the impact will throw my upper body down and forward. Sometimes I can land it and sometimes I roll off from the force. Therefore, I really need to focus on engaging my core as I start my pump and hold it through the rotation and landing. This will help to keep my chest up. Rolling off the coping. Usually, if I over rotate or drop my chest, I'll properly roll off the coping. But also, if your coping is low like the one in this video, it is harder to get a good solid lock with your slide blocks. Therefore, you may want to look to try and land your 360 stall with your body more inside the ramp rather than on the deck. If you land like this, you'll need to push your knees over your toes if you want to hold the stall a little bit longer. Otherwise, your weight will roll you back into the ramp. However, practicing your stalls with your body more in the ramp will make it easier for when you want to do a 360 frontside grind. This is something that I'm working on. So I hope this video helps you with your 360 frontside stalls. If you have any questions, please comment below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Also tag me on Instagram shortstop.6 as I'd love to see your progress. Thank you for watching and please like and share this video if you found it helpful. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more skating tips and tricks.